Being here before. 
salutation on the shore You may not believe The truth is what I tell I've one more thing to say Before I say farewell Listen to my story Take heed of what you hear And I say to you all Old Genghis should be feared
gotta do Take it all as it comes Be ready cause the time is close at hand
is a story of the dark world set upon an isolated island on an isolated moon. This island which was named Hanandos was made up of many small domains. In times past each domain shared the wealth of its lands with its neighbors. Lofty mountains, fertile soil and rustling trees. So similar were these domains that they were known as the Mirror. Each land was a reflection of all the others. But alas, those days came to an end. The mirror lands had no more. Harandos was not conquered from without, but from a dark place within. With the departure of the elder kindreds and the powers of good men tried to create their own magic, a power which related to the demons of myth. And with the unleashing of this power, the kingdoms began to crumble and fall. There were men who fought the dark ways, for they said the creatures of the dark world could never be controlled. Those who tried to master the dark powers would themselves have rates of its malice. However, there were some who embraced it. The cruel Baron Norman Deliri was one. His wife, Baroness Elian, and their execution and Grover were others. They are now a part of a certain darkness. Three of the seven shades of evil.
They gathered upon the high wall and beside the spire, dark cloth where the wind howled beneath darkened skies. Their forms were tall, their features in the eye shaking gowns. Lops rustled as they passed over entered ground. The smile was aging, a shrine to the last bounding in front of death. Casting its shadow in the cold sacrifice stone, its surface smooth, its purpose hard. The light began to fade into the west, and no man raised its arms. The second circle the stone, they chanted. Hunched figures moved up the hillside like the rolling mist. Some scurried, some crawled. Sharp nails embedded in bony fingers clutched a withered head. Evil thoughts from evil minds twisted and contorted demon faces. They too formed a circle, a circle about the seven. The chant grew louder, slow and thinly, cold and deathly. The circle began to move. They danced around the stone, the stone and the spire, the spire and the seven. Louder grew the chant as the moved the demonic shades, twisting, turning, now beneath talent beats burst into flames and hell. The circle began to close. Upon the slab of sacrifice and each wave of gain, strength as a frenzy high, graceful, enchanting, flowing melodically to the rhythm of the rains. The rains in the rain, the rain and fire.
They wound their way across the moorlands at walking pace, the piper playing his flute melodically. Before him rode the mighty lords of the Harandos, behind the snaking lights of a thousand torches. Raymar raised his hand and the column halted. The piper fell silent. Raymar listened. Do you hear it? Distant chant drifted softly across the moors, a muffled whisper on an angry wind. Raymar winds. The race of their ring. Soon they will have the fire. They are calling, beckoning, soon she will come. They have the power not even Miriel may withstand. Even now the queen is awakening. John bowed his head to look at Cretin. He was pointing into the mist. There on a nearby hill a flame flickered, caressing the earth with fire. Onward, cried Rayman. Let us hope it is not too late.
As Raymar approached the circle, the flames leapt higher. He calmly stayed and raised his eyes above the inferno to look upon the spire. Colours rippled across its ancient stonework. It looked now as it had not looked for a thousand years. It laughed at him. It mocked him. For an instant, Raymar's courage wavered. Then he drew himself tall, and determination pierced his eyes. He spurred his mount onward.
of the server. Raymar covered his ears in dismay. He saw a flawed hand reach out in greeting. Then the fingers began to coil. Though Raymar was ten paces distant, he could feel the icy grip of no man. As the world began to darken, he saw a wavering figure upon the sacrifice stone. Beautiful, enigmatic.
As the flame subsided, Joe entered the circle. He saw his father's broken body laying upon the charred earth. His face was a mixture of anguish and hatred. He pointed his sword with trembling hand to where the sun had fled the misted skies. I will find you, no man. Be it the last thing I ever do. I will find you. Yeah.